Welcome to this lecture on differentiated instruction. Today, we'll focus on process differentiation. As a reminder, process differentiation is one of the four pillars of the differentiated instruction framework. Again, by systematically using these four pillars, teachers can be much more explicit in their approach to differentiated instruction. Process refers to ways in which the content is delivered to students. Differentiating the process means varying learning activities or strategies to provide appropriate methods for students to explore and then master the concepts. The process of how the material in a lesson is learned may be differentiated for a students based on their learning styles, interest, and readiness, as previously assessed through the pre-assessment process. When looking at process differentiation, the emphasis has to be on active learning. The adage of moving teaching from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side is helpful in making this transition. Active teaching strategies place the teacher in the role of facilitator of student learning. With this shift, the focus is on person-centered instructional strategies as opposed to curriculum-centered ones. Strategies such as flexible grouping, increasing student choice in learning activities, Cooperative grouping practices can be helpful in achieving this aim. A helpful framework to look at process differentiation is the work of Robert Marzano and his focus on the high yield strategies. A number of resources related to high yield strategies can be found at the Center for Catholic School Effectiveness website. In moving to more approaches for process differentiation, it's important to assess or audit your current instructional strategies. If you look at the workbook, you'll see that there is an audit in order to examine your own instructional strategy. The idea with process differentiation is moving away from teacher-directed modes of instruction to more levels of student engagement through student ownership of learning. Really, this all begins with the auditing of your own teaching practices. We all fall into sort of our modes of, of preference, the things that we're most comfortable with. So really analyze your own teaching. Look at how can I vary my instructional response? Do I spend more time delivering information through auditory channels? If that's the case, how can you increase visuals? You know, am I you know, doing a lot of just teacher-directed material? Can I do that with more cooperative grouping? Also look at the role of technology and how we can sort of integrate technology into the delivery of content. These are all very important and valid ways to look at and increase process differentiation for students. So the best way to increase the repertoire of process differentiation strategies is to reach out to your colleagues. So I encourage all of you to join the discussion thread on the website to be able to share different ideas about how to approach this kind of differentiation. 